Hello and welcome to section 3 of chapter 14 on motivation. We're looking at the hungry animal, the motives to eat, which we're all stuck at home and we're learning distance learning and the food is just everywhere and it's very easy to, to uh, overeat and gain lots of weight. This COVID-19 for a lot of us is going to turn into a COVID-15 because we're going to put on 15 pounds and then you guys are going to have your freshman 15 coming up, so watch out. So how much does gene psychology and our environment affect our appetite, how much we eat and what we're doing? And so this is really interesting with the environment, with what's going on in our situation with our quarantines right now. Uh, it's gen genetics and weight. Psychologists once thought that being overweight was a sign of emotional disturbance, and now they just know it's largely genetic. Uh, controlled studies found that fat people or obese people have the same amounts of emotional issues as skinny people. Uh, heaviness does not always come from overeating. Lots of people eat a very sensible diet and they have more weight on them. Uh, one study had people gorge themselves for a month. Eat as much food as you want, which we're doing right now. Uh, and it was very, it was just as hard for skinny people to gain weight as it was for heavy people to lose weight. Um, our culture glorifies eating, uh, especially in America, and we have a big issue with this with our obesity rate skyrocketing. We have characters in cinema and TV that eat all the time and overeat. You have Homer, you have Scooby and Shaggy, you have Garfield, Patrick, Cartman, you have Winnie the Pooh, uh, Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> just, just hammering it down right now, oh baby. Uh, and so we all have a set point, this, which is a weight we should be. Um, that your our body wants us to be whether we're trying to gain or lose weight we have a set point uh, it can vary 10% in either direction the set point regulates your appetite so it tells you when you're hungry or not uh, how much you should eat and your weight fluctuations if you've ever tracked your weight daily for a period of time you know your weight fluctuates quite a bit day to day if your body gets out of its range the body can produce an urge to eat or a loss of appetite. So if you need more food, your body's gonna say, hey, you need to eat more, or hey, we need to slow down, let's pump the brakes a little bit, and it can slow or speed up your metabolism as well, which is how fast and how efficiently your body burns calories. Long-term overeating, though, <clears throat> can raise it. It's much more difficult to lower the body's set point. Um, They've done studies on The Biggest Loser, that television show, that reality show where these people lose hundreds of pounds and found that five, six years later, most of the contestants, you know, over 90% of them gain their weight back. In fact, they are heavier sometimes than they were before the show. And what they found is that show kind of ruined their metabolism. One contestant himself uh, was only burning 800 calories a day, meaning that he had to consume less than 800 calories a day or gain weight. 800 calories a day is nothing and for a person that weighed nearly 200, 300 pounds. Uh, and so everyone has a genetically programmed basal uh, metabolism rate, which is how quickly you burn your calories. The way to which our, our rate at which our, burn, our bodies burn calories for energy. It's a complex interaction of metabolism of fat cells, hormones that maintains our weight. And it also changes over time. As you age, as you get older into adulthood, your metabolism, metabolism slows. <clears throat> In a typical year, an American, we eat almost a million calories. <laughs> now, maybe that's in the last month for some of us, but we almost eat a million calories. And, if, and our bodies are very efficient. If we eat a million calories and burn a million calories in a year, we stay the same weight. If your body doesn't burn 3,000 of that 1 million, you gain a pound. And that's not much. 3,000 compared to 1 million calories is hardly anything. But just that little bit of a variation, 3,000 calories out of, a, out of a million in a year, and you're going to gain a pound of weight. So set point predicts irritability of weight and body fat should be high. Multiple studies say that the irritability of your um your set point is 0.4 to 0 0.70. Uh, twin studies for people raised separately help support this, and they find that weight is largely inherited. Uh, identical twins usually gain weight in the same areas. People store fat in different areas of their bodies. Twins gain their fat in their same spots. This is a famous uh, twin duo that used to ride motorcycles. They're in the Guinness Book of World Records for like heaviest, heaviest twins and stuff like that. 
Genes are very important for weight. Um, there's 171 Pima Indians in, or Native Americans in Arizona. Two-thirds of women and one-half of the men became heavier over time. But once they added 12, 20 to 45 pounds, they stopped gaining weight. They got to a certain point, and the body kind of just regulated itself. Uh, their metabolism rate rose, their weight stabilized, uh, and it worked well for them. Um, they are genetically predisposed to be more plump than other people. And some people are just naturally skinny. Some people are naturally heavy. Uh, this is the age-adjusted prevalence of obesity of American adults. Um, you can see that in total, uh, non-Hispanic whites, 38%. Um, non-Hispanic blacks, 47%. Asians, 13%. Hispanic, 47%. If you look at men and women, uh, it's kind of remarkable how high the obesity rate is for, for women, especially of Hispanic and uh, African-American cultures. So mutation of genes can regulate the normal eating and weight control can cause obesity. And this is what's going on in our country right now. One G gene, the OB or OB, can lower the levels of leptin uh, in the hypothalamus, which causes the hypothalamus to signal the person to overeat, to keep eating and eating and eating. Uh, injecting leptin into mice reduced their appetite. It doesn't show the same results in humans. They're looking for that magic pill or magic shot that we can suppress our appetites, that we can eat and whatever we want and not gain weight. It's too complex. The mechanism of governing appetite and weight explains why diets and appetite suppressors fail over time, which is a yo-yo diet. People go up and down with their weight. Uh, while you're dieting, they lose weight. And then when they go off the diet, they gain it all back even more because their metabolism is slowed. The true way to lose weight or gain weight, if you're trying to do the other, is a lifestyle change that is permanent. Culture, uh, people all over the world are getting fatter, not just in America. The world is getting fatter and fatter. 72% of Americans are obese or overweight in the United States, over 20 now. Uh, in kids, childhood obesity is raising 21%, nearly 21% of kids, 12 to 19, are obese. The rates have climbed in both sexes, all social classes, all groups, and in many countries, not just the U.S. So why? Uh, we have an increased abundance of low-cost, high-calorie food. You can go get you know, a double cheeseburger for a dollar. Go try to find something healthy for a dollar like that that fills you up and satisfies you and has uh, you know, all the stuff you want. We have a habit of eating high-calorie food on the run. We, we like to grab and go, and we don't realize that we're just eating a ton. People like to go to Starbucks and have their frappuccino. I have my frappuccino here. That's like a, just a gut bomb. It's like six, seven hundred, eight hundred calories. Things that are portrayed as being healthy for us are not. People that like Chipotle burritos, and don't, don't get me wrong, I like a Chipotle burrito, but a full Chipotle burrito is the same amount of calories and fat as two Big Macs. We have the rise of energy saving devices. We don't have to get up and move anymore. We have the speed and convenience of driving. We're not walking and getting out and being fit. Uh, we have the growing sizes of typical servings of food and drink. American plates have gotten bigger and bigger. Our portion sizes are getting bigger. Uh, we have a preference of sedative, uh, sedative recreation, Netflix, video games, uh, instead of going out and exercising all the time. Uh, calorie consumption is up. Exercise is down. So this is the share of adults that are defined as obese by 1997 standards. These are the most, most obese nations in the world. And these are all Pacific Islanders, except for Kuwait. I mean, they were like moo-moos. Uh, and so American Samoa has 75% of their population is obese. Now, if we take out the other nations, the U.S., number one, U.K., Australia, Russia, Germany, Spain, Mexico for a while actually passed the U.S. for number one most obese nation. Saudi Arabia is there. Uh, this is the obesity rate in Europe. This is the obesity rate in the United States compared to other countries, which we think we're really fit. Uh, but compared to European countries, we are much larger. Uh, we live in the fittest state in the country, Colorado. Uh, and so this is kind of a chart that shows this is the obesity rate in 1990, Colorado. Uh, we are the skinniest state in the Union. Mississippi is the fattest. But if you watch what happens over time, every state gets fatter and fatter and fatter. Um, it just keeps growing and growing, the obesity in this country. Um, Colorado, the obesity rate now, 20 years ago when we started this chart, would have been the fattest state in the country. Uh, and so it is it's kind of a shocking thing that's going on uh, in our country. There's the current rates of obesity in the country. Uh, Colorado, followed by Hawaii and D.C., are the least 
obese states in the country. However, like I said, if we go back to 1990, our Obesity rate, which is around 19 to 20% in Colorado, would be number one fattest in the country. So all the reasons why. Uh, culture. This is a, a video that shows the body standards of women for, uh, throughout the decades here. Cultural attitudes, eating habits, and activity levels are determined by culture. Uh, we have a region's customs and standards. Wow, a little Kim Kardashian there at the end. Sorry about that. Uh, what does the ideal body look like? And so we, we're told by society what we should look like on TV and magazines and on the internet, uh, on the Instagram. In areas where, where famines are common, fat is seen as, as a sign of health, affluence in men, the sexual desirability in women. You go back to the Renaissance, being wealthy and being heavy was meant that you were, you, you were rich and it was attractive to be healthy. Farmers used to eat big meals for intrinsic motives. They needed hard work. You need lots of calories. Now they eat the same way for extrinsic reasons. It's sociable and family traditions. It's more fun. Ironically, as our nation got fatter, the cultural ideal for women has gotten thinner. Women are supposed to be skinnier and skinnier. There's more pressure on women uh, over time. Heavily muscled men used to be a sign that you were a working class until recently. Uh, the, the ideal man in the 60s and 70s was very skinny. Uh, now you're supposed to be muscled and chiseled and all that. This is the perfect male body on the left according to women. Uh, and on the right is the perfect male body according to men. You can see that there's some differing opinions on that. Uh, physical and emotional problems can occur when your genetics clash with your cultural ideal for your body. Obesity causes numerous health problems but also psychological problems as well. 67% of black women are overweight 40 versus 47% of white women. Uh, black women are more, four times more likely to die young from heart disease. Uh, evolution has pre-programmed women to store fat for menstruation, for childbearing, for nursing, for menopause. Women are naturally heavier, excuse me, not heavier, but have more fat content to their bodies than men because of evolution. Uh, these factors can all lead to eating disorders, bulimia, where people binge and purge, where they eat a ton and then, you know, purge it by throwing it up. Anorexia, nervorosa, um, Radically reducing food intake, just not eating. Karen Carpenter in the 1970s, very famous singer-songwriter, died from anorexia. It can damage your health permanently. Uh, eating disorders, plastic surgeries, produce uh, procedures among men are also on the rise as well. It's just not a female program. Um, there's the abuse of performance-enhancing drugs to get that look, that physique that our society is saying you need. Some occupations have high rates of eating disorders as well. Uh, some psychological factors contribute to depression, anxiety, contribute to all these eating disorders. That's all I have for today. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, let me know. In the meantime, eat some fruit and exercise. We all should.